What's good with YouTube? You already know, Big Flocko with the comics perspective, and I'm smashing, dashing, sliding on through with a little bit of energy. Please hit the like, subscribe, comment, do all those things to help support this channel, and hit that bell notification for future fire content. So, I was checking out stories written by a current prisoner. Shouts out to my boy Tony over there. And I heard Cornell um, pretty much put out there uh, that Daryl D. Castrojon was killed over there in Mexico after being on the run for two decades. First and foremost, you know, um, my condolences to his family. You know, um, I know some good individuals that, um, you know, are somewhat related to uh, Daryl, man. Real good people from out that way, man. And um, just want to send my regards to the family, man, and uh, whatever they're going through. And so, therefore, I'm going to talk about this with respect to Daryl, right? I did time with Daryl way back in the 90s and 2000s. And I do agree, at that time, he was a very influential in metal, okay? The pod was pretty much on shutdown with every camarada that was in that pod. He was only in metal there. Everything went through him. And he was very, very, um, what you call, uh, very discreet, very personal, where he kept to himself. He would play a chess game. And when he'd make the movie, it'd be funny because he'd be playing against, you know, the a, one of the AB members named Chris, and then there was Pirate. And every once in a while, he, he would play against uh, my next door, uh, my vecino, Nego from Pomona. And he he would make a move, and then he'd wait about 20 seconds, like 10 seconds. He already knows he has checkmate, and then he'd just say, gracias. That was it. That's as much as you were ever going to get from Daryl on the tier. He wasn't going to be out there. Um talking he wasn't going to be out there wolfing but everybody in that pod man respected him the roll call it started with him when it ended the roll call ended with him with him he was in cell 13 so it was like everything was like a perfect match and this was like way back in like the early years of corcoran shoot um you had already over there as well you had some of the uh, the grajadas were there as well um and see there was a lot of shit going on at that time that people don't realize that um you know, with Artie from King Cobras and, and, and Daryl, you know, um, Daryl was really good at politicking, even though you're not supposed to politic. He maneuvered very well. And that's why he has such a long career and so much respect within the organization. Now, as we know, Los Angeles County Jail is almost like the traditional headquarters, right? Like the main state where everything comes out of because everything goes through there, whether it's coming from Corcoran or the Bay. Okay. Now, one thing back then, this is what people don't, don't know unless you know, right? Was a lot of directors were coming from Artie or, or Daryl back then while they were in corporate shoe. Artie got a little too greedy with territories and infringed on a lot of people's territories, as well as he kind of, uh, he was allowing certain shit that shouldn't happen to happen. He was also taking too much control of other prisons at that time because basically it was almost like Corcoran was headquarters for them, right? But Daryl played it right. I think a few times I went out to the yard with Daryl and got to chop it up with him. And, um, you know, he was he was a righteous individual, man. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, he didn't talk like like others individuals did. He didn't press up on anybody. He wasn't like he wasn't drawing attention like like a witness with other inmates. You know, I've been around Jacko. I've been around, like I said, Artie. I've been around a lot of these different cats. Right. He was the one that kind of was more um, impressive to me. You could just see that the leadership just fucking it rang just directly from him, you know, and and that's why my time with him, man, you know, in the beginning years, right, my in my career, I didn't really have too much respect for the ops, right, and you know they were like looked at as my number one enemy because of the way I was schooled, but Daryl kind of maybe changed a little bit as far as interacting with these individuals, having that mutual respect because of the way he conducted himself. As everybody knows, he ended up getting his case overturned when he was in Corcoran. I mean, it was uh, some DNA, I think, related to like a murder or something like that. It did not match. And he ended up getting out. Okay. Now, as you know, um, years later, he was uh, charged with the murder of Frankie B. He was able to post bail. And from there, he pretty much fucking fled the fucking country. Okay. Now, knowing how this individual operated, knowing the, the uh, contacts and connections he made, and how he was always business-orientated, he was able to establish 
and sew up a lot of activities across the border, right? As well as on the side of the border. You know, there's a lot of stuff that was going on over there in Mexico and on San Bernardino side that there was part of, man, that it's, it's so hard to explain, you know. Just, you know, you think of Joker, Gibby, Toto, um, the twins, uh, Maldito, all these individuals, man, uh, in some way or some form or fashion were associated with the territory of San Bernardino. So apparently, according to Corneo Rap, Santa Rosa um, passed away now, or he was murdered, found him hanging. Who knows what happened? They could have tortured. I hope he wasn't tortured, man. But over on that side of the board, it's a little bit different. Now, let's get to this, these other matters at hand and talking about this. Now, for those of you guys who may be questioning, um, you know, uh, the val validity of uh, these topics, man, I know Cornell. I did time with him in Corcoran Shoe. I've spoke to him several times, man, offline, off social media, you know what I'm saying? And he's a good dude, man. And I'm going to tell you guys this, right? However you guys feel about him telling stories and what he's talking about, if you knew his story and the situation that happened to him and the ultimate betrayal that he went through, then you may have a different outlook if you think anything bad about the dude, man. Dude's been through some shit, man. His family's been through some shit. Shit that's just unthinkable. As well as he has some health conditions, you know. I think I first met O'Neill maybe 17, maybe 19 years ago. Always been a good dude, man. It was just vaguely, just in traffic. Even though I checked all news outlets looking to confirm this story and corroborate it, right? If Cornell said it, more than likely, man, I'm going to sit there and have to say that he ain't going to give you no bullshit story or no lies. It's going to be true, you know? Um, I mean, there was a time period that Cornell was actually going to come on a convict's perspective. But at the time, I wasn't getting the views. And uh, at the time, I really didn't want to put him out there. And I told him that. So at least he found, uh, you know, the ability to work with Tony, man. So I'm going to start tapping in and looking at these videos a little more because once I found that it was him, I was like, oh, man, let me check this out, man. You know, so if anybody doesn't know Cornell, um, he's a good dude, man. He's been around. He was involved in the mix. Um, if he was in the right location at the right time, he would have already been pulled as an Emmy member. Put it that way. Then again, some of that was personal choice. And as well as he knows... There was a lot of dudes that thought they were being recruited, like Shotgun from uh, 18th Street. But the Padrinos that were telling them that their stats was good were already falling out of favor, you know. So, yeah, Cornelio's def definitely a legit individual, man, and his stories are very, um, they're authentic, man. He, he was in the mix. Anyways, I don't know if um, Cornelio's told his story, though, yet, why he's fell back. But once you hear it, man, you're going to completely understand it, man. It's a fucked up situation. Um, and I hope sooner or later he does tell it. Now, as for Daryl, this is still a surprise to me, man, because Daryl was fucking a smooth operator, man. Not only was he intelligent, had a business acumen for um, success, right? Everything he did, he was successful. He calculated every move, though. You know, he had foresight. He didn't just look at the present moment. He looked in the future, you know. Um, but there's a lot of things going on over there now. In Mexico with a lot of metals over there. Look at it. You had evil that was killed a couple months ago as well. And if you think the jealousy and hate is bad over here in the States, across that border, it's on a whole higher level, man. So if you're doing too much or doing something that somebody sees, man, they operate different. I'm telling you, it's it's a whole different way of, um, you know, a uh, chain of command type of structure, you know, um, procedures, protocols, and, and there's a lot of hate. There's a lot of motherfuckers that will hate if they see you succeeding. And as, you know, we know there there was an internal struggle for the San Bernardino area, who was in charge, who was in control. So I would have to think that part of it would have to do with that. You know, other part would probably be some business, money. That's the only other reasons why someone's going to get clipped is if you're in the way of making money or if you've uh, stopped someone from making money. Anyways, another interesting fact, Daryl was actually the first MA member that I had ever met, ever. And I'm going to say this, I've never seen another metal get as much respect as the respect that Daryl was getting. You know, his story is a good one. Like I said, man, got released on a DNA um, technicality. 
to being accu- to being accused and charged with uh, killing a senior in middle, to bailing out on a million dollar bail, to being a fugitive for almost two decades over there in Mexico. My relationship with with the MA members was either they were hella cool, we got along cool, like Jackal, you know what I'm saying, and a couple other cats, or we didn't get along at all. You know what I'm saying? It was no, uh, there was no ever middle ground ever established, man. And that's just how it was. Anyways, man, like I said, my condolences to his family, man. The man was what he was, and he believed in what he believed. It is what it is, right? With that said, your boy Flacco, ACP, I'm gone.